Today we are continuing our Revelation series, and the man bringing the word today is a man who, who leads our healing and deliverance nights here every Tuesday night. If you guys don't know, every Tuesday people gather here uh, and get prayer, and we see miracles, deliverances. It's amazing. So, the, so, so uh, uh, this man, he grew up Muslim and converted to Christianity after encountering Jesus. Uh, he's pastored several of his own church. He's, he's pastored his own churches for several years, and to this day, still uh, or, like helps out at churches and, and speaks into churches um, in the Middle East to, to this day. And so, um, and also, this is my, my one of my favorites. He, his background is also in electrical engineering, which I also have my background in. And we need more, you know, technically minded people who have encountered the supernatural power of God that we can't explain. More people like that in this world. So. Um, this man is on fire for the gospel and a lover of Jesus. I can't think of a better man to bring the word on this Mission Sunday. Can you guys jump up to your feet and welcome up Pastor Masood Tadegi. Much, Pastor Josh. I thought there was something different with this man. I didn't know why I like him so much. Now I know, but uh, I, was, I'm, I am uh, in practicing electrical engineering, but I want to tell you, the power of God is much better, more powerful. When He hits you, He hits you to build you, not to destroy you. And we love Jesus. This is good to be in the house of the Lord, among the saints, the priests, and King of Almighty God. I am so happy for the opportunity that we're going to talk about the persecuted church. We are walking through the book of Revelation. Last week, our beloved Pastor Greg brought wonderful words regarding the letter that Jesus wrote himself through the pen of Apostle John to the church of Ephesians. We are going to look at the letter that Jesus himself sent to the church of Esmirna, the believers of Esmirna. And um, it is my privilege to stand here, and I hope I have, I have, uh, I don't want to say hidden agenda, but I have an agenda. <laughs> Hopefully it becomes revealed, does not stay hidden. My goal is that to make you aware of the persecuted believers. There are in countries such as Iran, Islamic countries, Middle East, in uh, China, North Korea, and they are standing steadfast to their belief, and they are paying a high price. I hope that we all get aware of that and also be on watch for the persecution that is creeping on. Satan does not come with his ugly head, the horn and ugly face, and say, hey, you know what? I am here to pull the rug under you today. He's not going to act, he doesn't act like that. But he creeps in inch by inch inch by inch, and push you to the edge of the rock that then you have no choice but a step out. We have to be on watch. When we talk about persecuted church, there are many that they have lost their life. There are many that currently they are in prison. There are many that are left in jail and they have died. Today I want to talk to, on behalf of them, on the presence of the holy angels and God Almighty and talk to the saints that we be aware. Do not take it for granted that the freedom we have in this country. Do not take it lightly. But at the same time, because everything is good, do not forget about other sisters and brothers that are in pain and standing for the faith, standing faithful to the God that is God of this country, the God of this, this, this population of the believers in this part of the world. You know, the Bible says when one part of body is in trouble, is in pain, the whole body should be agonizing. 
And we have sisters and brothers that they are waiting. And also another agenda I have that we all get aware to the power that we have through Jesus Christ. The power of resurrection, the same power that rose, raised Jesus from that is in us. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from that, he is in us. He is in dwelling in us. He is in you and he is in me. We are power. We have more power than we can realize. And once we get grasp of how much power we have, the life is going to be different for us. And the effect that we're going to have from this place to the far land is going to be effective for the Christ who died for it. I want to also bring to our attention that Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. He said, upon this rock, upon this solid faith in me, in Jesus Christ, I build my church and the gates of Hades shall not, will not prevail against it will not, shall not prevail against the church. The church that is radiating with the light of Christ, the church that is full of passion, of love of Christ, the church that is standing what Jesus died for, it will prevail, it will thrive, it will not get destroyed. No power, no power in this world, no matter how much power they have, no power in the world that we cannot see from principality. They are not able, they are not, not going to be able to destroy the church that is establishing Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Also, we read in John 10, 10, it says, Thief does not come until unless to come to steal, kill, and destroy. I, Jesus, come that they may have life and have that life abundantly. We have life in Christ. We have power in Christ. Here I want to tell you, Jesus is zealously in love with the church. Also, I want to say Jesus is passionately involved with the church. Where church is, where the believer, guess what? Jesus is also there. If they are in trouble, Jesus is there with them. Didn't Jesus told Apostle Paul, you are persecuting me? And say, Lord, who are you? He said, when you are persecuting the little one of mine, you are persecuting me. So here I am telling you about the things that is happening. By the way, I probably, most of my testimonies are about Iran and persecution in Iran. But I hope it's not just come, you just get focused on this country. When I speak of Iran, please think about the Middle East. When you think of Middle East, think about Europe. Think about other places. In the places that believers are not free to confess their belief. They lost their job, they lost property, they get separated from family, they are on run, they live in, in um, hiding, and even their own family, they are outcasts. If one person come to Christ and confess their conversion, their family, their own family, by their regulation, they are after to kill him. And they think they are doing their God service. But at the same time, I want to say that we have God that is bigger than any power. Is bigger than any power that is oppressing, is causing persecution, pressing the church, or all the principalities. Didn't Bible tell us, doesn't Bible tell us that we are seated in him and he raised and seated at the right hand of God and he is the head of church and everything. Everything means everything. Everything means every power. Every principalities are where? And there, and there, and their defeat. What is the feet of Jesus? The body. So once we get grasp of the truth of who we are, what we have, our life is going to be different. Amen? Amen. 
So we're going to, um, as I said, look at the letter that was sent by Jesus to the church of Esmirna, or I should say believer. Many times we think church is one thing and believers are something else. We thought believer church is nothing. It's not a building. So it is, if I, I try to correct myself, number one, I'm not going to point to anything that is not of God. We are all one body, called by one God, by one Savior, by one blood, and his name is Jesus. Let's read on from uh, chapter 2, Revelation, verse 8 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Esmirna write, This thing says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulations, and poverty, but you are rich. How quickly he turns around. You are rich. Tell yourself, I am rich. Tell your neighbor you are rich. You have more accessible to you than you even can imagine. You have more power available to you than even you can imagine. It is the time that the church rise and get to the realization that what we have in Christ Jesus, how much power we have. This is a powerhouse. You individually are powerhouse. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The one he raised, Jesus, he dwells in you. And all the power that he has is available to him. You are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews, and they are not, but are synagogue, synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into the prison, that you may be tested, that you may be tested, not destroyed, if he is for us, if he is with us, if God is for us, who can be against us? You will be tested. Abraham was tested. And after that, he proved and he realized how strong he is, whose God he is serving. The God, Jehovah, Yaira. He is a provider of that to you. Think. The power that you need, the thing that you need to put you over, not under. Tested, and you will have tribulation 10 days. Thank God, only 10 days is not forever. The suffering that you are going through is not forever. 10 days. Remember when Rebecca was going to be taken to, uh, for marriage for Isaac? And the family said, let her stay 10 more days. Period of time is not going to be forever. Jesus is not going to be sitting idly and watch you get destroyed in the trouble. Remember when they say in their trouble, they called on him, and what did he do? Sent his word and got them out of their trouble. Who is that word? Where is that word? The word in the beginning was? The word was? And the word became? The word is here. Jesus is here. With full power is here. Holy Spirit is here. He's so passionate about his, his church. Amen. I'm sorry. Sometimes I lose control. <laughs> Somebody told me don't apologize for it. Be faithful unto death. Don't give up. And I will give you the crown of life. He who has ear and ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, says to the church. He who overcome shall not be hurt by the second death. 
In order to understand better, when we dive in the letter that Jesus sent to the church of Esmirna, it's good that we stay back a few steps and look at all these letters that were sent to the all churches. Holistically, we look at them. Because then we get a little bit understanding, what is that for us? What is the application to us today? When we look at, for example, the church that we can know as, as a loveless church, but when we go deep, and it was the, uh, uh, covered and, and explained by our pastor here, Pastor Greg, it, we see the, the fibers, the ingredients of love in this church. He said, you are patient. You are enduring the problem. Some of the ingredients for agape love, patient, endure all things. But when we see, when we look at the letters, the letters are written in the very formal formats. Looks like you're writing an official letter to some official offices. Has a letterhead, from, to, and the subject, and the discussion. When Jesus is the saying from who, the attributes of his character uses for each church, it is just for, to help them, to realize, either commend them, of doing good, or realize the condition that they are in. And using his attributes to come from the condition that they're in to the position that they ought to be. For example, in this church that we call it loveless, but actually Jesus said, I am walking around the golden lamp stamps. I am in you. I am in your midst. I am in your church. So if he's in there, but he says you have drifted away. It is just, he said, well, you, you started operating. You're working at the throne, at the feet, at my feet. But then now you are so far away that you are doing things your own. You were thriving once you were on the throne in me. But now you are striving, doing all the work. He's saying that you started with the spirit of Mary, but now you are acting as Martha. He's calling Mary, come back and bring Martha with you because this is the place you need to be. And when we look at another church, we said, well, you have gone, you, you made a marriage, and uh, you got intermingled with the things of the world. There's, it's very hard to see the difference between the world and you because you have mixed with the world. And then we, he's in the letterhead, he says, this is... He who has a double-edged, sharp sword in his mouth. What is that? The word. The word. The word. The word that is a mirror for us. The word that is a cleansing agent for us. Telling them you've been, you've been intermingled. You need to get separated. How do I say? Get into my word. And by my word is that you, you have set your mind and renew. And then you get the calling that you have. In the word that is, it is a hammer. It is a mirror. It is a washing agent that separates you from the world for the calling that I have called you for. And also we see when we see immorality, impurity has entered the body of the believer. He uses his eyes full of fire. He said, this is the eyes that sometimes we look at, it is there to destroy. No, it is holy fire. He said, to rule my eyes. You need my holy fire. Now, the, the, out of the passion, out of love, I am here to cleanse you. I am here to, put, to get you rid of the impurity and put you on the place from the position that you, a condition that you're in the position that I have called you to be holy and be perfect for me. And when we see he's calling the church dead, I don't dare to call anybody dead. He is the owner. He is the one for this. If he call, wants to call it, call it then. But we have to look at it in context. There are times, be honest with you, I hear what you say, you're dead. When I have faith and I don't act according to my faith, what am I doing? Faith without action? Is so that's why then we see he's talking about the spirits, the Holy Spirit. He's telling them, get in line, let Holy Spirit 
act in you, be influenced by Holy Spirit, then you are not dead. You are active and you are powerful. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power and you be might. My witness in the Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. What is that? When we allow Holy Spirit to work through us. Amen. So when we look at the um, letter to the church of Esmirna. Esmirna in Greek means loveliest. And we get into that, what it is called, loveliest. In, cha- in verse 8 it says, And to the angel of the church in Esmirna write these things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. There are two specific characters of Jesus we see that he is writing in the, in the, from about himself. And this two things that he's commending them. He is giving them encouragement that in the church of Esmirna, believers, they had Jesus first and Jesus last and nothing in between. They did not allow anything to come, anything between them and Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter how the, costly the price was, losing their life even, losing their job, losing their property, but that they had the position and stood fast in the position that they wanted to be. Jesus is all or nothing at all. Jesus is first, Jesus is last, and nothing could separate them from the love that they had for Jesus. And we see the good description of this position of this kind of believers. We read that in Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors. What are we? In what? Bad thing, good thing. In the valleys and in the mountain tops. In all things we are more than. I love to be conqueror. Just to be conqueror, that's the best thing. But what is more than? Have you ever think about this? More than, more than, more than conqueror. Yeah, through him who loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Didn't leave anything. Nobody. Nobody. So all this government is doing that, or Iranian government. No. If we come to realization, that how much power we have. We respect officials, but the power is within the church. Church is powerhouse. All the answers that to the problem of the world, guess where they are? Doesn't the Bible say you have mind of Christ? Doesn't it say the Holy Spirit is in you? Doesn't say Holy Spirit knows everything. I learned something from reading the diary of Nikola Tesla. I said, where do you get all these ideas? How do you solve all this complex problem? I said, God knows it. God knows everything. I just ask God. And I am doing that. And he's giving me the answers. That's who the God is. And also, there is another thing that is very unique in introduction of Jesus about himself to this church. It says that I was dead and I am alive. The believers in the city of Esmirna, they had experienced the burial. They were acquainted with what Jesus went through, through the hardship they were going through. 
And because of that, they were experiencing the resurrection power. The same power that raised Jesus from dead through their hardship, from losing everything, they received that. When you are in the position that you are just having those two ingredients as part of your life and standing for Jesus Christ, Jesus is first and Jesus is last and nothing in between. Nothing. He is the beginning and he is the end for me in every aspect of life, in everything I do for today and tomorrow. Nothing I do not allow. Anything come in between. And the other thing is that when we have tested the persecution and the suffering, we got to the point that we have power available to us, resurrection power. These kind of believers, they're going to be fearless. Nothing can derail them. Nothing can derail them. Nothing can destroy them. We had a conference. Um, and we had some of the uh, people from uh, underground churches attending outside the Iran. And we had uh, these people uh, to becoming the uh, leaders of those uh, underground churches. Uh, in one conference, because they were coming by car and bus, we didn't want to get them in trouble. We told them, don't bring any Bibles with you. We will provide it. So from here, we took Bible, and during the conference, we gave them Bible to use during the time they were in the conference. And toward the end of the conference, I reminded them, don't take any of these Bibles with you. We don't want any of this Bible. Get to the situation when you go through the border that you get in trouble. They didn't return the Bibles. Next day, I said, please return the Bibles that you were received. Nobody did return any Bible. The last day before they go, I said, oh, give me all the Bibles. And they collectively, unitedly came with one representative and stood to my face. They said, Pastor, we appreciate and we know you care for us. But we want to let you know, our life is our life. We can put it down, we can save it. By the way, as a reminder, Pastor, the Bible says, he who ever tried to save his life will lose it. I said, peace, brother. Take all the Bibles and I have one. You can, you can take mine too. They went through. Next day, we get call from them. And they wanted to give me a message. They said they passed through the border. Everything is fine. By the way, some of those Bibles that we took with us, we put them in the hand of a number of travelers waiting in the immigration office. And including some of the officers, we gave them some Bibles. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The city of Esmirna was very beautiful city. Had beautiful buildings, beautiful streets. It was designed perfectly. It was on the hill at the at the by the ocean. And the streets were such that the breeze from ocean make life so beautiful. Living in those houses, walking in those streets, and even it was uh, famous that the city was famous as the crown city. And sometimes the flower of Asia. It was the number one for its beauty and its size. And one thing that is uh, interesting to me, when we read as Jesus introduced himself with those attributes, he said, I was dead and I'm alive. And then when we look at the history of Esmirna, Esmirna way back was completely destroyed by a severe earthquake. Dead. Nothing left. 
But when they rebuilt it, they built it by engineering structure. And that's why it became beautiful. And one of the things that the uh, characteristic about this city was myr, is myrna, myr. And that is a sap is taken from the shrub-like tree. And it has, in those days, had two main usage. And one was that when you, when you broke the leaf of this tree, it radiated a sweet aroma. They used that for the perfume on those days. And also, the another application was they used that for preparation of body at the burial. Jesus' ministry had mere involvement from beginning to the end. Remember one of the gifts that Magi brought to Jesus was? Myrrh. And when he was hung on the cross, they gave him sour wine. That was wine mixed with mer, used as painkiller, but he refused. And also the Nicodemus, the Pharisee that went to visit Jesus by night, now he comes at the time that they want to prepare Jesus' body, he brought 100 pounds of mer. Mer means bitter. When you are in the bitter situation, and that is for cause of sake of Jesus and the cause of gospel. When you are going through that hardship, guess what? The one who has paid the price, the one who has paved the road and opened the door to come to your rescue, his resurrection power converts the situation from bitterness into something very sweet. Remember the house of Pharisee when Jesus was invited? Jesus was invited from, in the custom was when you have a guest over, you will pro, uh, offer water to wash hands, to wash feet, and you kiss him, and then you put oil, some perfume over his head. And none of that was for Jesus. If you put yourself in that situation, it must be very disgrace and kind of, persecuting for Jesus. But guess what? When that woman come in, when that woman enter, what happened? That alabaster jar, hallelujah. It changed the bitter situation into very sweet aroma. And what she did to this day is still that aroma going around. And we are smelling and getting benefit from. Amen? That's who our God is. He does not leave you in that situation. He does not leave you there, but he is with you. And my hope is that we get to realize who is our God. That city was a very prosperous city. Was, um, from a religion point of view, many gods and many goddesses. There were many temples, and there were some streets. The history said that there were some streets between the temple. They had gold pavement. It was, the sidewalk was laid with gold. And in that rich city, you can see when as a believer you lose all what you have. You have everything that belongs to you. And we see here that Apostle Paul describes it. He said, but everything that I have and suffered the loss of all things, I count them as rubbish. And then continues, said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We had in one of the uh, conference, we had a couple that uh, wife and husband, they were um, engineers, very successful engineers. They, had, they were holder of uh, some patents, and in the country, their lists were in the list of inventors. But now they were in that conference to get trained to become the leader of the uh, underground churches. When we were baptizing them, I was doing the baptize in the pool, and uh, the wife came and told me, they had two young boys, one of them, the older was seven or maybe eight, and he came, Pastor Masood, uh, our son wants to get baptized. And we try to tell him, we can do it. But no, he said, I want to get baptized by, by him. I said, okay, bring him over. In the pool, I dipped him. And I brought him up and I held him like that. He was radiating. 
with joy and the light of Jesus you could see it was reflecting from his eyes so I put him by the side of the pole conference was over they went home and this boy goes to a school and share his joy with the students and the teachers see the commotion and come and says what happened he said well we were in such a place and I was baptized not by anybody by the guy on TV <laughs> he baptized me and the, te- and the teacher being devout Muslim. What are you talking about? And the, right from the beginning, the first day at the school, the young guy, full of joy, he tasted the persecution. So he goes home and he tells parents, the parents right away, without any time wasted, they get one briefcase, some briefcase. They put their belongings and they flee the country overnight. They come out, and they, uh, we got contacted by them. And I told this uh, lady was talking, I said, oh, I'm really sorry. By the way, when she came to the conference, she just had received advanced stage of breast cancer. <laughs> During the conference, we prayed for her. She goes, and she verifies that she was cancer-free. And now this thing happened, I, I, I told her, you know, I'm sorry this thing happened to you. I'm terribly sorry. Said, Why you are sorry, brother? What we lost compared to what we gain, we have tested his resurrection power. I am standing here cancer-free, and we are rejoicing over the salvation that we have and the opportunity to share and bring many people to Christ. What is all that? We count them as Apostle Paul said, nothing but rubbish. Hallelujah. That's... We're going to read uh, verse 9. At the beginning, it says, I know your works. I know your tribulation. I know your hardship. I know. He doesn't say, I am aware of it. I am fully aware what you're going to do. He says, I know. Know the word here is that being there in intimacy. He was there with them. He was done in the places that we had. And it is kind of hard for me to just imagine the God Almighty who did not spare his son. He died for us. And he is the owner of the everything that earth has. The earth and is its fullness is belong to God. He has he has the whole universe, the whole host of angels are at his command and he is stand and he has his children those faithful ones the one that stand for their faith to him for love to him and he is stay there they are suffering and so okay i know no it is not his character he do anything he stays with them he gets them out and for his glory do you remember when uh, the three uh, jewish boy that were thrown in fire they didn't want to bow to the king. They threw him in the fire, intense fire. How many times? Seven times? How many times they did that fire? And now the king runs and says, how many people we throw in the fire? How many? Oh, you are not there? Three, right? And their hands were bound. They said, I see four loose, free. Walking in the midst of fire. What kind of fire you are in today? Look around. Look who is standing next to you. He said four. And they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I wonder who that is. If the God that did what he did in Old Testament... How much more under the new covenant? How much more for his children? How much more? Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. He is in there in hardship when we read in chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, Apostle Paul says, because uh, I doing all this and uh, I have messenger from Satan, is it just like a thorn in my, my body? And three times he asked God, what was God's answer to him? My grace is sufficient. And then he realized, oh, what he has, what the grace means. It not just be happy you are saved, just, just endure everything till you go to, he to heaven. Hell, I'm sorry, to heaven. You go to heaven. And then he says, the power of Christ may rest upon me. You are in trouble, the power of Christ is upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproach, in needs, and in persecution. The power. The power of Jesus. Here we read in Luke 10, 19, it said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all over all. The power of enemy. How much the power of enemy? All, all is what? All. all the power of enemy. Who has the authority to do that? Who has the power to do that? Why you are not bold like this? It's me. He has given me and he has given you the authority to thresh over, to trample over all the power of enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. You know, sometimes the uh, devil knows us. If I go, you know, I have, I have lots of power. <laughs> he tells his buddy, don't worry about that. Go get after the ones. I have all the power. And when his friends come together, they run away. They flee from you. Because you're resisting the devil. How you resist? By the knowledge of power you have. By the knowledge of your identity. By the knowledge that you are sitting in Christ. In the heavenly places. Anything come against you is against your Lord. Hallelujah. So next time I pass by you, if you go like that, I, I hate you. I have done this. I do it to the young kids. Right? Why you have Bible card like that? Stand up. Walk like you ought to. Walk according to your identity. We are not moved by what we feel. We are moved by our faith in Christ Jesus who died for us. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. In Philippians it says, I can do all things. Who can do all things? Christ? Who can all? You know, I, one time I was facing a very difficult task. I had a car, I was driving it to, to the church in, in Canada. And the engine blew up. That's natural. You put so many miles on something, guess what? And I take this car to many mechanics. They say, don't touch it. Get rid of it. I said, how do I get rid of it? They sell it to someone. I said, how can I give my problem to someone else? But then say, if you really insist, it costs you like something, six, eight thousand dollar engine. But if you really, I had a Christian uh, mechanic, and he sat down in the office, looks like he was giving me a bad report on the health. He said, brother, we know you are serving the Lord, but you know, but if you want to do it, I do it for 4,800. I said, 4,800, I went, a study and got parts for less than 500. And I repaired it. And I have a picture. My head is deep inside this engine. And I have that picture on the wall. And right below it, I said, I can do all things in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Who has strengthened me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing becomes impossible for those who believe. 
Do we have any believer in the house? You know, I'd rather to go to war with lambs, but the lambs, they have lion hearts. Rather than go to war with lions with lamb hearts. How many lion's hearts we have in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. You are rich. You are rich. Let me read the verse for you. Philippians 4, 19 says, And my God shall supply some of your needs. All. All. According to what? To his richness in glory by Christ Jesus. I want to give you a verse, write it down. At least write the number. And print it. Put it above your bed. Put it in the, on the mirror. Put it in the car. It says, Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually. How many times? Continually. continually. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. When you have to shout? When you are prosper? You wait? Shout before. Because you're shouting for God. You know his character. He enjoys the prosperity. The prosperity in finances. The prosperity for your family. The prosperity for your job. The prosperity for your health. The prosperity for your family. The prosperity is all that is belong to you. Yeah, I mean. What a timely was that letter to this church. Soon after they received the letter, the law came, the regulation came that everybody have to uh, confess Caesar as Lord. Lord Caesar. Lord Caesar. This church, the bishop of the church, old man by the name of Polycarp, who was the disciples of John. And he says, no, Jesus is Lord. And the magistrate said, well, you get punished. You have to renounce Jesus and receive Caesar as Lord. So it's not going to happen. Said so they have pile ready for you to burn you. But he had compassion for him. He said that uh, it's easy. All you have to say, okay, you don't want to say, you don't want to renounce Jesus, but openly say, Lord Caesar. Two words. No, it's not going to happen. I said, old man, what's going to happen? All you have to say this word. I said, listen, 86 years, I faithfully served my Lord. He never caused me any harm. How can I now blaspheme my Lord, my King? My savior. Let's say, okay. Put him on the fire, on the pile. And they, were, they tried to bound him, nail him. Said, you don't have to do that. Let me be free. And they didn't tie him. He stood there. But they start praising his Lord. As the fire was coming up, a blaze. Oh, Lord, you are my king. Oh, Lord, you are great. And singing unto the Lord. The fire came up burned him. And the history says that the aroma, the smell, was that like you get at the standing at the bakery, baking bread. Smell. And the smell all people, affected all people in Colosseum that came to watch. To this date, when you put member of Christ's body on fire. What the smell? You are burning his body. And to this date, the aroma, it affected many people. Something that was as bitter as myrrh, 
turned into something sweet that brought salvation to many. Thanks to be to Jesus. We had a um, number of uh, underground church leaders were arrested right before Thanksgiving in Iran because of distribution of Bibles. One, among one was a very young lady, and we were very worried for her life. She was taken to a notorious jail. And in the, at the beginning, the first day, the, the officer in the jail recognized, it was, it, it noticed that this girl is not in fear. And actually, was joy in her. And then he goes to her and says, Hey, young lady, why you are not mad? Why you are not angry at us, at the people that they brought you here? And very bad thing going to happen to you. Aren't you angry? He said, No. My Lord Jesus has said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And for the duration that she was in jail, nobody touched her. When she was, when she was there, with her family and others were so worried, they go to visit and they come out encouraged. Their faith pumped up. And when she came out, he said, Jesus was with me there. The experience of meeting Jesus, I never had that before. He was there for me. He stood by me, and he gave me the source for love and joy of my enemies. That's who our God is. So what we have to do as a church, number one, do not be dismayed. Do not fear man. Just fear him. And also we have to recognize, don't take it lightly, the Bible that we have in our hands. Throughout the history we have gained, the progression of the revelation that we know. This is the best time in the Christian history that we live. It's better than any time past, including the first century. What we know, with the Holy Spirit and the revelation and the light that has come out out of this. So then you say, okay, well, we have it free here, but how about those people that they don't have? I'm glad you asked. Do something about it. You can get involved. For your information, there was a large number of Bible that was confiscated when they arrested these leaders. About 20,000 or maybe 30,000. They are in hand of government. Do we worry about it? No. Because they probably get sold in some markets. And the official now they have Bible in their hand. Isn't it God good? And the Grand Church probably wouldn't be able to reach this high ranking officer. And now they have Bible. 20,000 Bible there. Amen. The word of God is powerful. It's alive. It's sharper. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's keep on going. The Holy Spirit. About Holy Spirit, I want to leave one verse. Jeremiah 1.10. See, I have this day set you over nations. Who is he talking to? See? See? God says, I have set you over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and then pull down. Now I'm always so talking about Jesus. But where is Jesus? He's in us. And to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. This is why the world hates us. Because they know how much we have. And we get to the point, using this power, we are on top. Praying. The church that prays. 
goes a long ways. Remember Peter when we're thrown in jail? What did church do? Pray, prayed, and prayed. And what did happen? The angel of God was sent to jail. Set the Peter free. Where did Peter go? To the church. Here we had, when we have number of these leaders were arrested, happened to be on Tuesday when we came to church, and I shared it with Tuesday House of Healing and Freedom. And it's interesting, that night, normally we have a bunch of people coming, but that night nobody came. I think that was plan of God. We devote ourselves to praying, and within 10 days, they were freed. Never, never happened before. And I want to encourage you. I want to ask the ministry team come forth. And today, let us not pray for our own, but we want to pray for a country, for Iran, for Sudan, North Korea, you tell me, China, Russia, Ukraine, Venezuela, South America, and Canada, and America. And if you miss something, just when you get to the minister, join hand and pray fervently. You don't have to be only two, whatever you want, maybe five, ten, whatever. But let us take advantage. The church that prays, the angel of God gets released. And they go to the jails. And you will be surprised with the result. I love you all. Thank you so much.